So I'm here with Gregory Wong, who's a pretty prolific uh, YouTube star. What's your name on YouTube? Uh, Spartan117GW. He is a pretty big airsoft enthusiast and, uh, and, and a resource for it too. So if you want to learn anything about airsoft, you want to go to his channel. He's got that and a lot of Jurassic Park Jeep fun stuff. And that's why we're here today. Today, we are taking his Jeep. Whoa! <laughs> Today we're taking his Jeep to Guillermo's house so that we can get it painted as a Jurassic Park Jeep. Because right now it is green, it's a forest green, and it has to be changed to a sand beige, and then we have to add the little touches that make it a Jurassic Park Jeep. So we're on our way now to a friend's house that has a compressor and a paint gun, but you can have confidence that this is something you can actually do in your own garage because that's exactly what we're gonna do. So before we get to that, I'm gonna have Greg tell you his story so you can have a little bit of background and know exactly why he's doing this himself. All right, so my name's Gregory Wong and I'm a member of the Jurassic Park Motor Pool. Well, I've always been a fan of the movie, always been a fan of the car, uh, and in a way I've always wanted a Jeep. It's a military, it has a vehicle with military history. And I was in the military for about six years and now I've been out for about two in the reserves. And it's just, um, Something about it. Uh, right now, we're heading to Guillermo's house so we can get this uh, process on the go. Sanding, painting, and uh, we're also turning this thing into a fully fledged uh, Jurassic Park team. From purchase, it usually takes a few months, typically like three months or so, acquiring parts, getting work done on the car, making sure it's up to speed. Uh, but for the actual paint week, um, we're looking at maybe about like a week or so of like prep, painting and, you know, finalizing all the details. We did a lot of the sanding, a lot of prep. We're kind of like fine tuning and uh, making sure that everything is kind of finalized before we actually go and put on the primer. Uh, but yeah, the last few days it's pretty much just been straight up gorilla work on just ripping the paint off and getting everything prepped and ready for uh, sanding. So the first type of painting Jurassic Park Jeep is to sand it down to uh, preferably the stock uh, primer. But it's still green. Lots, lots of green. I think one of the biggest problems here is there's lots of unusual sanding. You know, he wants it done now and now and still completely green. I want it down to, you know, the primer. At least, it's gonna look dark if I don't put a lot of primer on it. How many coats of primer are we gonna need to make this look decent? I'm gonna say three thick coats. <laughs> on something like this, it's best to start sanding and taking components off a week ahead of time. My schedule kinda didn't allow for that because I had inventories and stuff at work, so I only had about two, two and a half days to really mess with the prep work. Um, but ideally, about a week, about 42, you know, 40 hours maybe. I mean, a pretty good chunk of time to really get all the gorilla work done because that's really where most of the bread and butter um, is, is done for the Jeep. And to mask it, you mask off everything you don't want paint. Uh, you use just painter's tape, it's soft, but yet it still sticks good. Um, and then you just use like this, like tarps, and, and then after that, you just get ready to just start priming. Hey, I'm taping here. Hey. Right now, I'm scrubbing the, uh, it's basically like a very thin plastic coating. And I'm using acetone to eat through the plastic and scrubbing it as I go along. Uh, the problem with acetone is that it evaporates really fast. So I found that even while I dunk it in here, it eats away at it a little bit. But as soon as I flip it over the scrub, uh, it pretty much evaporates right away. So I have to pretty much continually scrub uh, using the acetone to kind of keep things going along. But uh, it's going pretty good. Like we just took the yeah. front clip off. Took it to a sandblaster, like, okay, here. Yeah, that, that's easy. But that was 200 bucks. <laughs> We've finished the primer 
earlier today. Um, it's basically been a lot of touch up and kind of hitting the spots that were kind of missed here and there and just kind of uh, basically getting everything kind of prepped so we can finally get it all done. Right now we're at the point where there's just a little bit of sand beige left and then after that we'll move on to the red. But it's about 8 o'clock now but we're shooting for the end of the day to get the red stripes on there so stay tuned. So this is the very, very close to completed build for JP07. As you can see, I'm going to go over a couple details. Um, while I was doing the taping for this, it was just super crazy hectic and I ended up finishing at 2 in the morning because I was trying to get stuff done. So I didn't get to talk about that, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about the measurements because that's a really important part. But I'm actually going to describe what you're going to be looking at. Um, the picture that the motor pool references the lines from is actually uh, a scene from the movie where Malcolm is in the back of Jeep 10 and they're about to have the T-Rex chase. But there's a lot of discrepancy for how the lines should be. From this back seam right here to this line, I believe, is about uh, 18.75 inches. From here to here is about... 13.75. I made my line down here. It's supposed to be somewhere in between here, between both of these. Roughly the actual angle that it's supposed to be is, uh, I believe it's 72.5 degrees. On the rear flare, it follows the exact same angle. The front flare does not. As you can see, a lot of the existing lines are used on the Jeep. So it kind of makes taping this area off a lot easier than I expected. This is, uh, I think it's five and three quarters inches. And that's where you make your first line, again, at the 72.5 degrees. And I marked uh, this point right here. I believe this is also a 13 and three quarter inch stripe. So it's the same thickness as the one in the rear. As soon as you hit the flare, it's more or less a 90 degree perpendicular to the flare itself. So that part is going to be different than the rear flare have my stripe going down roughly at uh, 72.5 degrees. I did have a reference point, which I know, I know the stripe is one and a quarter inches from the seam, and then that um, red stripe follows pretty much down to the point here to the red button. Now the number, yeah, we kind of eyeballed it. Overall, I think it looks good. More particular uh, marking here, so four inches right here, centered on the hood. This is where it gets tricky, but at least it's pretty easy. They just followed from, you know, from the uh, portion of this little hinge assembly up here. Pretty much flush with the front, all the way to the front, straight across. As you get to here, it's going to curve. And so it's going to curve into your existing stripe. So that's kind of tricky, but it was actually a lot easier than I thought. Once we get up here to the windshield, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Take off the components that you need to take off. Uh, but I did red pretty much up to here, and then sand beige on the inside. Now, when putting on the decals, what we do is we line it up pretty close to the door hinge, or the door, the door handle, right there. And we make sure we're parallel, or in line with the uh, hinge of the uh, door there as much as we can. This is my first time doing this, and I was actually able to get you know, the continuity between the lines, like, look at that. Pretty damn good. That is how you get the stripes done. I hope this describes it fairly accurately. At this point, what it really comes down to is finding rare components like the Fogs or the Ramsey Winch, which I do not have. Um, but those components come with time. But as you can see, JP07 is well on its way to be very, very complete. Okay guys, so for on vehicle or off vehicle rims is one of the easiest way to paint your rims. So what I've done is take a 99 cent deck of cards from the dollar store, got a bag of garbage bags, everything like that. And so I've started by doing this, taping them up, and each one is taped down to the actual tire so they don't fall out. A lot of people worry about like behind here. So what I do is I take the garbage bag, I split it down the middle so it's as long as possible, and you just start by threading it, and then you just kind of push it back over top of your rudders and brakes. So you don't get anything on them. So I sprayed it with the Duplo Cobra Cut Spray, got as much dirt as possible off of it, and then I used a scuffer pad, not sandpaper, not steel wool, it's a scuff pad number three. You can get at any hardware store in the sanding section. And 
just creates a nice little scuff base for it. So you take the Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer, a good spritz to cover anything, so when you do the red, it goes on as smooth as you can. I'm using 2X Ultra Cover Paint and Primer in Apple Red. This is the color that matches my decals, so this is the color I'm going with. Dry, pull your cards, you're done. Well, it looks pretty damn spectacular, spared no expense. It it's it really is like a dream come true. Um, for me, it's just it's great because it's something that not only I can enjoy, but other people can enjoy too. It makes people happy, you know, it puts a smile on people's face, you know, in a world full of like negativity. It's nice to have something that just brings joy to myself and others, and you know, it's just great to have a fun car to drive to. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure you guys check out the Aficionado and Jurassic Park Motorpool. Thank you guys for watching.